Hey guys, today I wanted to make a video explaining the RNG in Fire Emblem 7 and how it works and why it's manipulatable and how it's manipulatable. Uh, I decided that this would be a good idea to make a video like this um, because as a speedrunner and someone who just plays this game a lot, it's something that I have to explain pretty frequently and it would be nice to have a pretty clear explanation somewhere on the internet that I can just think. And while there are some explanations out there, I figured I'd just make my own, just to make sure that I have everything in here that I think someone should know. So, in order to explain the RNG in this game, I figure the first thing I'm going to probably want to do is explain how RNG works in general. And then I'll explain how it works specifically in this game. And then uh, I'll explain why it's manipulatable, because of how it works. So, generally, RNG in video games is a list of random numbers, an infinitely long list that's generated based on a mathematical calculation that's supposed to, you know, bring up random, pseudo-random numbers that are relatively randomly distributed. But all you really need to care about is the fact that it's an infinitely long list, and in whenever the game needs to make a decision that it wants to be random, it takes a number from the list and it says, all right, is it bigger or smaller than this number or something? And then if it is, whatever it is, then, you know, make the corresponding decision. Um, and in most games, that infinitely long list is constantly changing. Like every single frame that the game goes by, it changes. And that's what makes it so hard to manipulate RNG in most games is because in any video game if you do the same exact inputs from the same start where this RNG starts at a certain point you do the same exact inputs frame perfectly you'll get the same result in any game it doesn't matter if even the game's considered not manipulatable it's probably not manipulatable in real time because humans can't really feasibly do that but in a task for example a tool assisted speedrun they can do inputs frame perfectly all the time, and they can get the same results, which is why TASs can manipulate pretty much any game. Um, but in this game, what the, the key principle that the RNG has is that it doesn't change frame by frame. It only changes on predictable like actions in the game things that the player can either control or completely predict their way around. Things like entering combat and leveling up. Those cause the RNG to advance in a predictable way. Um, and so by controlling when we do that, we can control the outcomes. We can get the same outcome every time. And we don't have to play frame perfectly because the game just doesn't require that to change the RNG. Like, or doesn't require that it doesn't affect the RNG to not be frame perfect. So to illustrate that I get the same outcome every time, I'm just going to attack this brigand, and you'll see that I hit him and Elwood dodges. And if I load the save state, and I attack him again, the same thing happens. I hit him and Elwood dodges, and it doesn't matter how long I wait, just doing nothing in the game, and every I, I attack him again, and same thing happens. Because the RNG just doesn't advance until I get into combat. Now, it is possible that the RNG can advance without entering combat. And that's the main way that we interact with the RNG. It, um, to manipulate it. And that way is by path retracing, or the game calculating paths, that burns random numbers, and it does so in a predictable way that we can use to manipulate the list. Every time we... Every time the game calculates a path, it takes a certain number of random numbers, depending on how the path goes that it's trying to calculate. So if I do this and make that blue arrow have to redraw itself, the game just had to calculate the shortest path to Elwood from where my cursor is. 
And to do that, it used random numbers. So this time when I attack the brigand, something different might happen. And indeed, something different happened. Now why, why would the game need random numbers to calculate this path? Well, what it's trying to do is it's trying to find the shortest path between my cursor and Elwood. And it just so happens that there are more than one shortest paths. So to pick between them, it uses a random number. And actually, it uses multiple random numbers, depending on the path. For this, in this particular case, it burns three random numbers. And the burns are actually dependent on what the RNG is before, but it's like every time I do this, it won't necessarily burn three random numbers. Like this one probably burned one, whereas this one burns three. <laughs> but <laughs> basically what's going on is... Um, when I move the cursor here, the game calculates the path from where my cursor is back to Elwood. So the first thing it can do is it can go right or it can go down. And in order to choose between them, it takes one random number. So in this case, it decided to go right. So once again, it can either go right or it can go down. It went right, so it takes a random number and it decides to go right. So then, one more time, it can either go right or it can go down. And it chose to go down. So that's three random numbers that it had to pick to get back to Elwood. And that's why it burns three random numbers. So by doing this as much as I want, I can change what the RNG is. And you see, I have no idea what's going to happen this time. So, but that's the idea, is it's basically just trial and error. You just kind of change, you just kind of burn random numbers until you get a favorable outcome. And it's not... Yeah, see, that time I got hit. But it's not... There's really nothing else to it, but it's not really that hard. Um, it's not as hard as it sounds. Like, we do all kinds of crazy manipulation. It's like, how do you do that with just trial and error? Well, there, there's a little help. So there's this tool right here. As you'll see on the right side, this is what the RNG actually look like, looks like. And like I said, it's kind of just an infinitely long list. And as I... As I move the cursor, you'll see it advances. As it's burning constantly. Every time I move this, this cursor around. And... That's basically the idea. So when I do this particular burn, you'll notice that it says, under next RNs, it says 53, 66, and 5. What that means is the first two RNs go into whether or not I'm going to hit the opponent, and the third RN goes into whether or not I'm going to crit. And since 5 is less than 12, I'm going to crit. So we can use the script to help us plan how the RNG goes, but for things like manipulating enemy phases, it's kind of just trial and error. If if we like what happens, we take it. If we don't, then we, tr we burn an RN and we try again. Um, but there are also scripts to help with that, too. And think you can think whatever you want of the scripts, but it's just an interesting way to push the game to its limits. That's that's the way I see it. And so that's what hopefully this enlightened you on how the RNG gets manipulated. Um, and that's basically what happens. So I think that's all I have to say about it. So yeah. Hope you learned something, and see you next time.